The 1986 Buffalo Bills highlights are brought to you by New York Life and its 9,500 agents and representatives who offer you quality financial products and services to help you get the most out of life. Bills are coming out of the tunnel entrance of the stadium right now. It will be Jim Kelly at quarterback. That's an exciting moment right now. And a beautiful day for football. It's football weather here at Rich Stadium. This is just 19 days after Jim Kelly signed a contract with the Buffalo Bills. He'll get the start at quarterback. And, uh, Van, I don't think there's been an opening day that's been as eagerly anticipated as this one. And Kelly has made the difference there. Kelly trying to get it going here. Dropping back to throw. Looking over the right, and it is caught by Reed at the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. On a sun-drenched September Sunday, the Buffalo Bills charged into the 1986 season with a new commitment. It began with the signing of Jim Kelly and carried the team through a long and emotional season. From frustration to fulfillment, the Bills emerged from last season behind head coach Marv Levy with a new dream for 87. It is a hard-working group of young men that have come back from last year. They do work hard. They have gone back to work. They have been able to overcome disappointment. You tell people you have to learn how to lose and come back. Our players haven't gone into a shell and haven't collapsed. But you also have to learn how to win and come back. In other words, not get giddy after a win, not say, oh, the pressure's off, to go back to work again. I think the squad still has to learn how to react after winning. We would like to be a team which this year and next year and every year, everybody who observes us, uh, media, fans, um, other teams, and ourselves say, you know, they are, a re they are a markedly better team this year than they were a year ago. Now, of course, it has to be reflected in the one loss record. You're going to be a Super Bowl champion uh, in not too many years, if they can say that. On opening day, Buffalo fans began a love affair with the team's new quarterback, whose love affair with pro football launched lofty ambitions. I've dreamed about being a pro quarterback and being the greatest quarterback in pro football, everything that goes behind being a player. I've always wanted to take on the challenge of bringing somebody up from when they've been down. I want to bring Buffalo out because the fans are so excited and they want to win her so bad that I want to do what I can to bring this team up and I know the players want to win. Inspired by Kelly's dream, head coach Hank Bulla led the Bills into the season opener against potential Super Bowl contenders, the New York Jets. Kelly's heroics ignited the team as he threw for nearly 300 yards and three touchdowns. Up, rolls right, looks, fakes once, now throws, touchdown, Pete Metzelar, unbelievable, what a fantastic play by Jim Kelly. Kelly dazzled the crowd, but while dreams of victory went unfulfilled that first week, his presence sparked excitement not only on offense, but also on defense, led by Eugene Marv. This playing has um, added a punch to our offense. I remember now being on the, on the sidelines um, for several minutes, having to stretch out, you know, before going on the field again. That's mean I've been sitting for a while, which is good. Even better, when Marv wasn't sitting, he became a tackling terror. What's been getting me over for the last five years is my hustle and my quickness on the field. A lot of times I play against certain players and beat them, not because I'm a better football player, just because I give more on that particular play than they do.
the Bills' leading tackler gave more than enough to rank among the best in the league. Linebacker Marv contributed a pair of sacks as well, but the team's sack specialist could be found on the front line. The strength of our defense had to read from front to back. Our defensive line was pretty good. Bruce had an excellent season. He's a complete defensive end, very strong against the run, very strong against the pass. His career is going to blossom so that he will become one of the premier two or three defensive ends in the league. That's a pretty good building block to start with up front. The foundation of the defense. Smith ranked second in the conference, collecting sacks against some of the league's best quarterbacks. But by midseason, like the ill winds that can plague Rich Stadium, inconsistent play and self-defeat battered the Bills. Players like Joe Devlin and Pete Metzelars knew a storm was brewing. If we're going to progress, if we're going to start winning some more ball games, we're going to have to stop beating ourselves to a greater extent. We need to go out and play with more confidence uh, when we're out there on the field. Everybody on the team has to have confidence that we can win this game, we're going to win this game. That lack of confidence reached frustration level against Tampa Bay in an error-filled circus that a final desperation play failed to win. If we can go into the games thinking positive, knowing we can win just because we're the Buffalo Bills doesn't mean we're going to lose every game. Start thinking the Buffalo Bills are like Miami Dolphin or LA Raiders, Chicago Bears. We can win every game we have. At midseason, the team dreamed only of winning the next game. They were running out of excuses. The Bills conjured up a fresh dream when they called upon Marv Levy to spark a revival. Levy's resume listed several years as Commander-in-Chief at Kansas City. Hey, let's stay tough now! Stay tough now! All right, gang, way to go! Way to go! Great play, Emmett! Great play, Emmett! We got a double wing right, 32 buck man. Levy quietly welcomed the challenge of being a mid-season replacement. One of the advantages of coming at mid-year is you get a tremendous running start on the following year. I know our personnel much better than I would have known them off of even film study. I know what they're like, not just as players, but as people. I think I've been able to better identify what our team needs would be. The number one ingredient for good morale on a football team, and you really have to watch the morale of a team that's been losing, is for a player to go out on the field and be able to say truthfully to himself, I'm prepared. The best way to accomplish that was to simplify and reduce, not to try to dazzle the other team with footwork. So we told our players, we're going to give you a relatively small package to learn, but you better learn it well and you better play it well. We can put the lines on the board, but the lines on the board aren't going to win. He had only six days to teach those lessons, but in his debut against Pittsburgh, those lines on the board were translated into success on the field. When Rob Riddick's touchdown lifted the team to a 13 to nothing lead, the defense lowered the boom. Pittsburgh had a superior running game all year, and we, we concentrated on trying to stop it by doing a relatively few things. By sticking to the basics, Buffalo held the Steelers to 53 rushing yards, and the game came down to the final play. <laughs> Rodney Bellinger's interception ran out the clock, and the Bills delivered a euphoric 16-12 victory to their new head coach. They did go out with a good sense of confidence and played very well that day, and were able to come off the field with a, with a win against a team that was improving very quickly at that point of the season. 
The Bills' quick improvement under Levy started with Jim Kelly, who had been the object of extreme interest to opposing defenses. <laughs> He's a tough guy. He's not what I consider your typical quarterback mold. I like that about Jim Kelly. He'll take a hit, he'll get up, and he'll go on, where some quarterbacks might be a little bit what I would call mamby-pamby about it, but he's not really that way. I really can't go into a game worrying about late hits or worrying about people taking cheap shots at me because when I start doing that, it's going to take me off my train of thought. It's going to take me off what I'm supposed to do, and that's to read defense and win for the Buffalo Bills. These tormentors discovered that, in Kelly, they had met their match. He performed, in my opinion, remarkably well for a first-year quarterback. I cannot recall a first-year quarterback, whether it be a Dan Marino or a Terry Bradshaw or a Burt Jones or a Montana or any of them, performing in the first year as well as Jim Kelly did. He's got full range of ability as far as throwing the ball. He can take a little bit off, he can throw it hard, he can do almost anything he wants back there with that ball. Jim has the ability to lay it in over the top of the linebackers and just drop it in right to you. He can drill it in between some linebackers if the ball really has to be shot in there. But he also has the ability, he's got that strong arm, he can throw the ball 60, 70 yards in there. With Kelly, the Bills' passing game took off like a rocket. He logged over 3,500 yards and launched 22 touchdown strikes. Kelly goes back to throw, rolling out to the right. He throws long down the right sideline. A man is there. It's Burkett at the 30. Jim Kelly, what a tremendous bomb to Chris Burkett. Kelly delivered an 84-yard touchdown pass, just like lightning. Give me some time, damn it. Give me a little time. They're so wide open. Just give me a little time. No hold. Push them up. I tell you what, they're open. Just give me some The offensive line anchored by veterans Devlin, Jim Richer, and Ken Jones, and steadied by newcomers Kent Hull and Will Wolford, set Kelly up to find receivers like veteran Jerry Butler. Kelly backing up. Looking. He throws long into the end zone, and it is Jerry Butler for the touchdown. What a great pass, and what a super catch, and Butler is down. Jerry Butler coming back off of a severe knee injury two years ago was playing very well, and unfortunately suffered a, a broken leg in midseason, and his loss hurt us uh, considerably. So Butler passed the torch. Andre Reid and Chris Burkett are there for the future, and it's going to give them a great foundation. If you continue to add quality people with the same goal in mind, the same commitment, the same desire, the same amount of enthusiasm, and a great degree of patience, which uh, goes into this whole operation, then we're going to be successful. Success blossomed for Andre Reed, an acrobat whose graceful style vaulted him to the top of all Buffalo receivers in both receptions and touchdowns. Chris Burkett gave the team a legitimate deep threat. His nearly 23 yards per catch was one of the tops in the league. Long downfield, a man is there, Burkett, he's on his way for a touchdown. At the 10, the 5, he scores! What a beautiful play! He beat the cornerback and one of the best. A 75-yard bomb from Kelly to a wide open Chris Burkett. Burkett and Reed electrify the Bills passing game. But Kelly carries a torch for his steady tight end, veteran Pete Metzelars. I've gotten a little contact with Jim Kelly, and he knows what to expect from me, and I know what to expect from him. He likes to throw the ball to tight end. He came in here and told me that. He says, uh, you keep working to get open, and, and I'll throw you the ball. A lot of times he'd get in trouble back there, and he just starts looking for me. I'm a big enough target. He can pick me out in there, and I just keep working, getting open, sliding whichever way I need to, and he's throwing me the ball. This former college basketball star could engineer his own fast break to turn any play into a big gain. He set a Bills record for tight ends with 49 receptions.
And sometimes, when Kelly wasn't even looking for him, the ball would find him anyway. It is given to the fullback. He fumbles in the end zone. It is recovered by the tight end. He bets allows for the touchdown. Would you believe it? With an improving receiving core and a developing offensive line, Jim Kelly and the Buffalo passing game dare to dream of greatness. For running back Greg Bell, fine-tuning the entire Buffalo offense had only begun. When you look at a football team and you look at an offense, it's just like an engine. Everything has to be in sync. We're all just starting to gel, I believe. Bell, who molded himself into the team's leading rusher his first two seasons, started 1986 in similar fashion. But he was hampered by injuries most of the year, and Rob Riddick filled the void. Injuries gave him opportunities, and he stepped in and seized those opportunities very well. Rob had an outstanding year, and it's unique. Here, here is a 29-year-old running back, which is, for a running back, uh, not very youthful for a coach it is, but who had an outstanding year. Riddick led the Bills in rushing and was the favorite receiver out of the backfield. And in the first Kansas City game, he teamed with Jim Kelly in a different way to spring for his longest run of the season. If there's nobody in the middle of the field and they are coming with a full out blitz, the backers are outside, the safeties are blitzing from the outside, why not run the play up the middle? They gave us everything that we expected. Uh, I checked two and I was hoping that they would stay in the blitz, which they did, and the uh, offense line did a great job making their blocks. You know, it was Rob Riddick in the air, run straight down the middle and just outrunning all the defensive backs. With Riddick shoring up an injury-depleted backfield and several receivers chipping in to give Kelly numerous passing options, the offense was a wash in depth. But lack of depth threatened to shipwreck the defense. Depth has to show itself more on defense than on offense. You have to be able to relieve your frontline players defensively. Without depth, nose tackle Fred Smirless relied on stability. It's a little bit more continuity. We're getting to work with each other more, understanding the calls and things of that nature, and able to execute without thinking as much. That's a big thing to do with the big improvement in the Bills this year. In addition to Bruce Smith and Eugene Marv, the defense took positive strides with N. Sean McNanny. Young veterans Derek Burrows and Martin Bayless held down the secondary. Linebackers Darrell Talley and Lucius Sanford brought respectability to the run defense. And Smurless, the old man of the defense, anchored a solid front line. Still, heartbreaking losses tempered these defensive gains. What it takes to win is simple, but it isn't easy. And um, uh, first thing I think that we have to do, and this is an oversimplification right now, if I had to identify the main thing we did not do that we can improve on swiftly to help us win, we have to be better at taking the ball away from our opponent. Although the Bills hardly resembled the Brinks robbers, they could make getaways like Bonnie and Clyde. Kelly's 47-yard return of a Cincinnati fumble set up the team's first score of that game. Rodney Bellinger's sleight of hand led to the year's only touchdown on a fumble return. On special teams, Ronnie Pitts, son of running backs coach Elijah Pitts, the former Green Bay Packer great, delivered the team's first punt return for a touchdown since 1984. 
all phases of the punting game played key roles as a blocked punt by Steve Tasker at New England set up a field goal. And punter John Kidd contributed a solid effort all year. Kicker Scott Norwood's 17 field goals kept the Bills on the brink of victory in a lot of close contests, and he gave the team an early stake in one of the biggest games of the year. It came in a most unlikely setting, on the road, in Kansas City. Against the playoff-bound Chiefs, the Bills looked more like the playoff team. Andre Reed's second touchdown gave the Bills a 17-14 lead late in the game. They just went out and played one heck of a game that day, and we did take the ball away three times, and that's the key statistic. Buffalo trying to hang on here. The blitz, the long throw for Stephon Page, and it is intercepted in the end zone by Rome. What a play. With their first road win in 22 games, the team looks ahead with confidence. But we want to get as good as we can get as fast as we can. And uh, um, patience may be a virtue, uh, but not in professional football. We want to get good in a, in a hurry. We want someone who's going to step in right now and be able to play. Someone like Ray Bentley, who came on late in the season to solidify the linebacking core or Nickelback Dwight Drain, number 45. Or rookie Carl Byram, who showed signs of being the fullback of the future. The future looks brightest for the pair of 1986 first round draft picks, tackle Will Wolford and number 33, Ronnie Harmon. In 1986, the Bills discovered leadership and pride in their new young stars. As they look to a new season, they know they are good enough to dream. The 1986 Buffalo Bills highlights were brought to you by New York Life and its 9,500 agents and representatives who offer you quality financial products and services to help you get the most out of life.